Having this true curiosity on the Randy Show. The one thing I've always questioned, even as a kid, was what were Rakshasas? Hmm. When you talk about Hidimba, yeah. Ghatot Kach, yeah. Bakasur, uh, effectively, if you truly try uh, attaching it to reality, was Bakasur some kind of a cannibal? Hmm. Like just a really well built cannibal. Was uh, Hidimba and Hidim also something similar? And then, if that's the case, why do we? have a hidimba temple in himachal pradesh hmm. where they say that oh this is actually where he lived near kheer ganga which is now known for stoners hmm. <laughs> who go up to trek to kheer ganga right but there is a hidimba temple there yeah um that's one question second question attached to that is this is something very very fascinating i learned from a parsi priest who was on the show hmm. what he spoke about was that zoroastrians are also an ancient culture mm. and i've really deep dived into zoroastrianism which is the religion of the parsis i figured that it's perhaps definitely the sister religion of sanatanda i'm pretty convinced i agree uh even when you talk about the modern um practices it's literally in parallel with sanatanda be it worshiping fire be it mantras be it avastha how we have sanskrit uh now in their mythology the word daiva was villainous yes in our mythology the word asura was villainous yeah cuter fact uh in their mythology ahura is noble hmm. like it is uh, the name of the angels yeah and they pronounce sir as her we have somras they have homras yes so their ahura is it our asura and their daiva is it our dev correct now if again if we try attaching these pieces of culture to reality perhaps we were two warring tribes and um in our epics the asuras are painted sort of as villainous but if you actually study the vishnu puran if you actually study the ramayan there are some slightly heroic asuras as well so it's not like you're painting all of them as negative you're painting most of them as negative with some exceptions and i'm 100% sure that they would say the same about daiva and deva yeah uh also they were based out of central asia iran uzbekistan all these places uh now was that what we count as patal lok in our hmm. uh culture there is uh, a, there is a name for that land uh, not patal patal would be south america okay uh, in more interest this one is a uttara kuru okay and uttara kuru was known from this uh, we can talk about like a ramayana times because there is a reference to kuru jungle in mm. a ramayan mm. which is like a haryana area but the kurus were known uttara kuru was known to ramayana so 14000 years ago also uttara kuru existed which is iran think of northern afghanistan turkmenistan tajikistan kazakhstan that area the east of a caspian sea 2000 years ago Uh, the greeks are uh, greeks also refer to that land do you know how uttara koro mm. basically uttara koro okay but let me i mean that may take another episode but let's come back to this actually i studied just like what you said um, what you studied uh, the persian for a long time uh, my study started with uh, lokmanya bal gangadhar tilak who wrote a book you know the orion and then the arctic home in the vedas going back to 140 150 years by the way he is the adya archaeo astronomer in the world not just india astronomy using astronomy in a way to understand our history in the modern times was started by lokmanya bal gangadhar tilak okay so uh, the references that you said to and i would ask you a question did your guest the parsi guest uh, uh, mention how far in the back in antiquity they refer to zoroastrian religion yeah Uh, because i will say uh, if you want to say the number that's great if you remember how far back he wanted to go it went roughly to what you're talking about as the ramayan time great period. great because in mahabharat there is a indirect reference to narad muni coming to yudhishthir and narad muni think of this as the journalist hmm. but journalist with a integrity <laughs> okay so there is a reference to narad muni coming to yudhishthir and referring to a certain practice with the fire worship and all of this in a somewhat distant land but not that far distant land and as a very mysterious interesting practice 
in about 7000 years ago okay but there are enough references in fact there is this reference to atharva veda they are the followers of atharva veda that is what is known but something else asura actually if you look at into the rugved asura is actually very much eulogized you know very much praised it's not seen in the negative way at all indra is called asura which is the highest deity there you know so that's now varuna is called asura over time this is what happens why now we may say rakshas as a bad person rakshas the sanskrit uh, basis for this there can be many meanings that's the beauty of a akshara shabda can have many meanings in the context but akshara which is just a letter can also have many meanings when you combine it becomes different meanings a rakshasa is rakshamiti rakshasa the one who protects mm. but think of it one who protects which means he has to be powerful or she has to be powerful with the weapon knowledge and everything now someone who is a powerful power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely over period of time something counter can happen simple example is our sikh brothers not all of them but sikh the origin of sikh is into protecting hinduism but eventually when the khalistan movement came into being they were talking things against india or against hindus and so on and so forth so those who were meant to protect hindus at some point for thousand different reasons will not go into that almost almost became enemy that can happen that's that's the reason of this now so ravana was a rakshas but ravana is a in the disciplic succession he is a son or a grandson great grandson of a great sage great rishi but person can turn around you know that can happen back to the uh, hidimba and so on so on so forth what are who are they basically they are human beings i mean just to simplify things i would say maybe they were people from africa and they were having a connection so somewhere looked at something they were looked at as a different slightly different things different powers i'm jokingly saying this but actually there is a enough basis uh, with a ravana a ravana who has conquered the whole world he had gone all the way to south america i mean in every direction and he was even india he was controlling all the way to himalayas and all the way to where we are sitting right now that's why the you know his his uh, generals were there into nasik where from where actually eventually shurpanaka incident happened and then ravana snatched away sita so he was controlling the pockets you know in the old times he was very powerful so because of that he has these relationships in the different parts of the world you know and then so intermarriages so you can say inter transnational marriages across the boundaries so those but they were human beings very powerful human beings very altruistic very uh, virtuous human beings my conjecture and again this is based on just hypothesis perhaps slightly emotional hypothesis because i love these epics is that i think life spans were longer than life spans were directionally longer but not some sometime you hear uh, terms like uh, say ram bhagwan ram after he returned ruled for 11000 years hmm. that is not to be taken literally there is a statement that sometime you know the formula helps you in the engineering you substitute something hmm. and you know kilo calories calories like that so there the formula is aho ratra samvatsara the you know the common sense should never be <laughs> left out you know so ahoratra samvatsara which means in certain circumstances you consider a reference to a year equal to the day and of course vice versa got gotcha. you so 11000 can be divided into days and that will come to 30 years or something like this got it so not those extreme years but to your point absolutely valid uh, based on the calculations in the mahabharat we have to accept there is no other alternative to accept that bhishmacharya was about 140 plus years old at the time of mahabharat war and he fought for the first 10 days that's almost impossible for us to believe i don't mean out folks out there it's impossible for me to believe that yeah. but in there is books like autobiography of a yogi where they speak about detailed kriya yoga which is yeah. a form of yoga that involves for lack of better words your own energy channels or pran or chi like chinese culture yes. they actually talk about how you can extend the biological life of your body and there's multiple chapters on it not going to deep dive into that for the sake of a free flowing conversation yes um so i would assume that life spans were longer yes health was generally better yeah but the human outcome of a longer life span is a longer time to build bigger kingdoms 
because effectively humans are tribal species yes so effectively what you're saying is they were probably just physically much better human beings correct who may or may not have had some kind of mystical powers which is why they were uh, initially perhaps kept for the protection of society they had goodness in them as well yeah. but sometimes power could corrupt correct and that's where the heroes of the epics like bhim like ram ji come in and take on rakshasas mm-hmm. and asuras if you enjoyed this clip from the ranvi show we've uploaded a ton of other clips related to a ton of other topics so explore the channel because there's something for everyone